As we celebrate International Women's Day, we thought it would be the perfect time to look into the significant roles that women play in the overall health of the economy. You may be surprised at just how impactful that role really is. We're going to discuss that right now on UBS Trending. Hi everyone and welcome to UBS Trending. I'm Anthony Pastore. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm here in the studio with my colleague from the Chief Investment Officer, Thematic Investment Strategist, Michelle LaLiberty. Michelle, good to have you here in the studio again with me. Thanks for having me, Anthony. So it's March, so it's Women's History Month. We've got International Women's Day that we're celebrating as well. Here's the big question that we're going to talk about today was the impact that women are having on the economy. What have you found when you look at those numbers? Sure, Anthony. Let me start with consumption. So it's estimated that women are the decision makers for up to 80% of consumption. So that's pretty substantial, right? And just think about last summer for some examples. We saw Taylor Swift, Beyonce, uh, Barbie, right, generating billions of dollars in consumer spending. But it's not just about consumption either. Uh, it's also about the wealth transfer. So through the next decade, it's estimated, or sorry, by the end of the decade, it's estimated that women will inherit up to $30 trillion. To put that into perspective, that's about the same size as the entire US economy. Right. So that is very substantial. So not only are they uh, decision makers when it comes to consumption, they're in set, to, uh, set to inherit wealth. And there's also the aspect of labor force participation, which can have a significant impact on growth as well. Right. I want, I want to talk for a second about what they're calling Swiftonomics <laughs> and what an impact Taylor Swift individually has had. It's a $5.3 billion in consumer spending around the Eras Tour, which includes the sales of the tickets for the concert. And then it's travel, it's hotels, it's restaurants, it's concessions, it's merchandise. Uh, Beyonce also, certainly no slouch in the money raising department when it comes to merchandise and travel. Um, her tour is raking in um, billions of dollars and also an average concert goer for Beyonce spent $1,800, which is tickets plus. So we can really see the influence that these two powerhouse female performers are having on the economy and the way people are spending. Really interesting stuff. Right. Just, it's not just the ticket. It's the entire experience. That's right. That's right. So um, tell us a little bit about, you talked about the labor force participation rate, which I think is, I've seen the numbers, and it's a really interesting to look at the way that we see by the different age groups of women how much they're actually part of the labor force. Maybe talk about that with us here. Yeah, it's really important because over the last 100 years or so, we've really seen a profound change in the way that women are contributing to our economy. Because if you think back, uh, you know, many decades ago, say the 60s, for example, there was less than half of women aged 25 to 54 participating in the labor force. By 2000, it was about 75% or three quarters. And the economies need labor to grow, right? So that is a significant change. And we've really seen essentially a shift from work that was uncounted because women have also historically been responsible for things like taking care of the kids, household chores, and that's work too. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily get added into GDP. So what we've seen is a shift from uncounted work to work that is being counted as these women enter the labor force. And there are knock-on effects of that too. If you take, for example, you know, a woman that's entered the labor force, not only does she now have her own income uh, to take charge with, she also has, again, added to that labor force and now you know, potentially has the money to hire someone for a cleaning service, for example, which would be counted in GDP. So there are second derivative impacts here as well. That's, and I love that you pulled that statistic up because um, I remember when I was a child, my mom stayed home with us in the beginning, and I promise her work every day was hard, as just as hard or maybe harder than the job that my father was doing at the time, and probably harder than what I'm doing today here. Um, and, and nobody counted it. So it's, it's great to see, like you said, there's secondary you know, kind of effects of that. And by the way, with that chart that we brought up, when you look at the labor force, now I should caveat this. Um, we have the, the um, Bureau of Labor Statistics has not yet released their 2023 findings. So we have 2022, which should be somewhere in the, in the, in the realm. But 75% plus of ages 20 to 54 are part of the labor force. I think that is an astounding number, as you said, compared to even just a, like three or four decades ago. 
Right, they're not just contributing through consumption, but they're adding their skill sets to the labor force as well, and that's contrib that's a con contribution as well. Absolutely, like huge economic impact. So what what about investors though, Michelle? Because you and I have had conversations about having diverse boards of companies and how diversity adds to the bottom line, the revenue line for a lot of companies. How much of an impact is that having and what should investors be thinking about when it comes to women and the economy? Sure, when I think about this at the company level, I think it's good to think about what I said in that first question as well, with that 80% of consumption decisions and that $30 trillion wealth transfer, you have to be able to serve that consumer. So you have to not only know your customer, but you have to adhere to and serve a consumer that is increasingly diverse as demographics shift, right? Because otherwise you're missing out on a $30 trillion opportunity, and that is very substantial. So there's that aspect of it, but I would also say more broadly, human capital management is paramount. You mm. need to effectively manage your human capital in order to yield productivity out of that labor force. So human capital in general is very important for companies. I would also say that companies need to navigate an increasingly complex uh, regulatory perspective, from a regulatory aspect to this, uh, and it depends what region that you're sitting in. In the U.S., you know, companies have to to prove and show that they are they have fair and uh, hiring practices and are putting the right people in the job, really regardless of diversity or gender, where other, other regions have very specific mandates uh, or regulatory requirements on diversifying boards. So very complex regulatory landscape for companies to navigate as well. Yeah, and there was another point you made or, uh, in a report that I read that said, you know, if you look at some of the benefits the companies are adding or enhancing, which like, for example, maternity leave, um, some companies uh, in the past only gave women a couple of weeks. Now a lot of companies are increasing the amount of time. So that's uh, perhaps enticing to a woman who understands that maybe someday she would like to have a family but knows that she can get more time with that company. It might entice that woman to go work for that company versus another that has fewer weeks of maternity, just for example. But I think companies are starting to really realize that by adding benefits like that, they're kind of enticing more people to come into their workforce uh, as well. So there's there's really interesting statistics around that too. Yeah, absolutely. And that becomes, you know, even more important when you have tight labor markets, right? You want to make sure that you're expanding your pool of potential hires so that you can hire the best person for the job. Right. Michelle, thank you very much. It's always great to have you here and uh, th thanks for sharing all these really interesting statistics with us. 30 trillion dollars in inheritance coming. It's amazing. That's it. You said it's the it's as big as the US GDP, a little bigger than the US GDP. For 2023. Thanks, Michelle. Good stuff. Thanks for having Good me. Good to see you. And thank you all for joining us. There's lots more information on this topic and more if you check out our Insights website at ubs.com forward slash views. There's lots of CIO content there for you. Plus, you can also check us out on all the social media channels, including Instagram. Follow us at UBS Trending. Lots of content there for you to take a look at. Plus, we always encourage you to continue this conversation with your financial advisor. Until next time, I'm Anthony Pastore. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. And remember to keep your eyes on what's trending. We'll see you soon.